Welcome back. I'm Brent Meredith. We're back again with Tennessee Equality Project Executive Director Chris Sanders. Thanks for sticking around and answering a few more questions, Chris. We appreciate your time. Glad to do um, it. As Pam mentioned earlier, I wanted to chat, chat with you a little bit about Evadsink Equality Day on the Hill this year. I know it's already passed, but mm -hmm. how did it go? Highs and lows? Went really well. The district captain set up great meetings with their legislators. I think they were pleasantly surprised at the openness of their legislators to talk positively mm -hmm. about our issues and uh, find themselves on the same side on the negative bills in many cases. Even some they suspect were quite far right. Really? A good turnout this time? Yes. Uh, we had uh, more than half the Senate covered and more than a third of the House, which I thought was really good. So, yeah, we're fantastic. Pleased. So, let's talk a little bit more about the, and I, I, I hesitate to say it, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, but the, uh, uh, that we were talking about earlier. Yep. Um, now, Indiana has taken a lot of flack about it, and, but it's not all that uncommon of a law. And that's, the, that's sort of the angle I wanted to talk about for a second. There was one actually signed by President Clinton when he was in office. Could you explain the difference in that and yep. why are they pointing to that now? with a different intent. Uh, it's a common name for a lot of laws. It doesn't mean the laws are all alike. Exactly. Um, what the Indiana do law does is pit citizens against one another or businesses against citizens in some cases. Mm -hmm. Tennessee's law protects citizens from government action or religious bodies from government action. For example, you remember the case of the mosque that was trying to locate in Murfreesboro? In Murfreesboro, yeah. It was having all that trouble. The Religious Freedom Restoration Act that Tennessee passed uh, protected that mosque from a majority that was hostile to it. Yeah. And that's really what ours does. It protects um, worship and belief and it really doesn't pit citizens against one another like the Indiana law does. Well, and I appreciate that, that, that explanation. It was very well said because there is a distinct difference in protecting religion versus discrimination right. under the guise of religion. That's right. Um, now, what about Governor Pence's attempts to sort of fix the law? As I was saying earlier, that was one of the things we talked about. He, he said he wanted legislators to go back and rewrite and make sure that there was no discrimination in it. Well, then, so what does that even mean? Well, when does a fix uh, become better than a repeal of the law, which right. is something they could do? Uh, well, and when when is, when is admitting that it needs to be fixed? I mean, you basically just said the law needs to be fixed. That's right. I don't think it's just a perception issue. I don't think it's merely a matter of clarification. I think it's a matter of there would have to be significant amendments or a repeal. Yeah. And as you mentioned before in the, or in the last segment, too, we talked about the mini indie version, our bill here in Tennessee, and yep. how it was tabled for a while, but we need to keep an eye on it for next year. Right. Do you think it'll come back in the same same incarnation, if you will? Or, or, or I will think it be? that one could very well yeah. be back. I think also we could have an Indiana style bill they tried to pass one in Tennessee last year, yeah. and it failed. Uh, I think after we get marriage equality in Tennessee when the Supreme Court rules, then the slew of negative bills will come, so we'll see. Yeah, so they're going to ride it out, see what happens here, see what happens with the Supreme Court, and then they'll probably tailor their bill in a different fashion. I believe so. Um, now, T uh, TEP is hosting the Nashville Marriage Plus rally mm -hmm. on the eve of the Supreme Court or oral arguments. I'll yep. spit that out. Um, tell us a little bit about that and how that's, put, how that's come together. Well, we're delighted that Nashville and Harmony is going to be there performing, but yeah. we're also going to have a number of individuals speaking uh, about the plus part of it. Everything we've got to work on uh, when marriage equality is all said and done. Job discrimination, bullying, homelessness of LGBT youth, on and on and on. All the issues that affect our community are still going to be there. And this is going to be, when we get marriage equality, it's going to be a major turning point for our state. Do you think that marriage equality is sort of the, that, 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 thing, that piece that's driving the rest now and, and sort of once that happens, everybody's going to kind of take, is that the fear? It is. It should be driving the rest. It can drive the rest. Uh -huh. In some cases, it is hiding the rest of the issues. Yeah, yeah. That makes total sense. Now, TEP can't exist without support and of course the, the rally is a form of that. Yep. But how can people who maybe can't make the rally, don't want to come out, have to work, do other things. What, what's the best way for them to get involved? Uh, well, they can go to our website, tnep.org. There are ways to volunteer. They can certainly contribute. Uh, we will need them at various times, not just when the legislature is in session, but we will have all kinds of educational pro programming. This summer, we're launching a Summer of Love tour <laughs> across the state to hit the rural areas uh -huh. that we are not hitting right now. Yeah. We want to be accessible to everybody, so we're going to try and to make it happen. And I laugh because I love the name. Not, well, I do too. <laughs> I love the name. I Summer do we're going to bring the love. So Now, in next week's show, I, we talked a little bit about this before we started taping this segment, um, but in next week's show, I'm going to have a sit-down with a local pastor. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the Religious Freedom Act and, I'm sorry, forgive me, marriage equality yeah. and religion yeah. and, and kind of how that comes together here locally and across the state. What is your sort of take on that? Do you feel as though that the, that the religious divide there is truly over just a few passages in the Bible, or is there more to it? Uh, I think it's um, the Bible in some ways or interpretation of it, but I think it's also what people are accustomed to, and it's just going to take more time. When you have that courageous church like the one in Franklin that's leading, that's going to help open eyes.
and no, hearts. Very much so, because I mean, for the, for, especially for the one in Franklin, and I, and I basically reached out to the pastor of Center Point. Um, he may be joining us in, in the future as well. Mm -hmm. um, they lost half of their half of their congregation. There was a church, I believe, in California sure. that did the same thing. Basically, they said they weren't going to ask their LGBT members to remain celibate. They were going right. to allow them to be who they are in right. church. Um, do you think there's sort of a movement there in the sense that if, if these churches keep doing this, that that will open more eyes? Or I think so. It's going to be painful at first because there will be growing pains and lost pains, yeah. but in time, people will come back and say, you know, you were courageous, you stood for something, and that's the gospel that I believe in. Fantastic. Now, I know you mentioned earlier in the other segment, the next session is what we need to be keeping an eye out for. Are there anything, is, do you see anything rumbling right now that people need to be paying attention to other than what you mentioned then? The Family Action Council is preparing for some kind of so-called Religious Freedom Restoration Act that's bigger. They've made no secret of that whatsoever. They've been inviting the leaders from Arizona's movement in to talk to Tennessee legislators and the public in their own action. Activists, so that's what they're prepping for. Interesting. Okay, well, listen, thank you so very much, Chris. We'll have you back soon again, I'm sure. Great. I appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Um, and we'll be right back with a look at Nashville Film Festival and the Entertainment Outlook, so stay with us.